Hello everyone and welcome for another video of Love and War Games. In this video, we will have a look at something we usually don't do, but we will take a look at what has just been announced to be released in October, so the next month. So if you order now, you will release this end of October. And I really wanted to make a dedicated video because there has just been the announcement, after some teasing, that there is going to be a new two-player starter set for Dystopian Wars. And that is big news indeed, especially since unlike the previous two-player starter sets that had been released, these guys are mercenaries, both fleets. And there are some civilian ships and some very exciting news. And it means that uh, no matter what type of player you are, if you want, you can buy this uh, box and reinforce your fleets. Or you can play them as pure mercenaries. So many options. So let's have a look more in detail at what you get. And first of all, let's just put this little picture on the side. Like, look at everything that you get. You get so much in the box. It's probably going to be like uh, the same price as the previous two player starter sets. Uh, so it, that is going to be pricey, but look at that. You have like so many, so many ships all around and so many tokens like that. That is incredible. Uh, that is really, really going to be uh, great. And now plus um, remember that we now have a partnership with My Hobby Place and uh, you can now have minus 10% on your purchases and it can help the channel if you order um, through the link that I will put in the description so it helps you it helps the channel everybody is happy and it's especially good for big purchases like this so if you are like ah, should I take it or not minus 10% can make you change your mind and uh, let, let's have a look at what is inside like I just want to be a little bit like I don't know how to say fangirling on this but it looks so good uh, one thing to note is that even the Sultanate ships which are here for which we did already have profiles have been changed so I will not talk too much about the rules themselves we'll talk a bit more when I will be doing the unboxing video uh, because uh, at this moment uh, we will probably have the definitive profiles but let's just have a look at what they are and how we think they will play so first of all like we can see uh, for the Union part let's start up with saying that one part is Union one part is Sultanate and uh, what do you get in the Union part? Uh, these guys are going to be the Honorable Eclipse Company. And they are the ones that are a little bit uh, boosted when uh, you are losing the battle. And they have better escort capacity, which is good. And uh, it's in their fluff, apparently. They are usually hired uh, to escort uh, ships. And probably, like, I can see they're a maybe a little bit more Sultanate. No, actually, it's balanced. But yeah, you can fight around these civilian ships and probably you will want to put uh, the Union in defense because it's more in their fluff. So you get one capital ship, uh, you can see the default ver variant which is the Excelsior and there are different variants. So let's zoom a little bit on the Excelsior. We can see there is a heavy gun battery right there. Oh, I should not zoom so much. And uh, this is probably going to be the combat oriented version. We can see rockets here. I guess this is going to be a rocket as well. I don't know. It looks really cool. I think this is the ship on which uh, the Admiral Hunter was uh, during the last uh, campaign. And uh, yeah, probably very offense oriented. We know the Union love their heavy gun batteries uh, because they have the give them hell rule. But there are some rockets are fine, especially if you can get them extreme range. And this Excelsior has other versions that you can build it as. Uh, you can, you will be able to build it as the Venture. And this guy, I suppose those are Gatlings. Uh, I don't know. If they are not, maybe it's going to be a cheaper version. If it's nothing, but I suppose this looks like Gatlings to me. Like, let me know in the comments what you think this is. Also, some rockets there. Uh, nothing special from the back. I do like this like Skytrain uh, appearance. And then you have the Custodian. And this is the most interesting ver version for me, like from a like guessing point of view. This looks a lot like a Solex generator from the Alliance. We know that the Union has been stealing. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> how to say? Inventing by uh, getting inspired uh, other technologies from other nations, like uh, some um, t experimental railguns, very inspired of the Russians, and some uh, e electrical weapons, very inspired by what the Imperium does. So it makes sense they would have some sort of a Solex generator. Uh, maybe it's going to be a Solex and a Hit Lance or Lancet all in one, kind of like what has been teased for the new Courant Carrier of the Alliance. We will see, but very excited to see which uh, which one does what. Um, I need to see the full profile. Probably this one, the basic one with the heavy gun battery, 
is the one that I would like the most because it would allow you to keep play it quite conservatively which is what I like to do with aerials so you count as being at uh, long range uh, because you will be at uh, closing with uh, this weapon and that's fine the Gatling and the hit lance if it is indeed a hit lance uh, you want to be uh, rather at point blank which is <laughs> I suppose this guy is gonna be fragile so we'll see how that goes let's continue you also have some mass 2 cruisers and then you have ju just a whole lot of mass 2 cruisers for the honorable eclipse company you have this steward which has again this um, sort of um, i don't know solex generator let's call it solex weapon it does have a little pointy thing here i don't know how to call this the, an antenna so it makes me think that it is both a solex and a heat lance if it is this is going to be a huge threat uh, especially, especially uh, if they, but no, I was about to say if they can give uh, give them help, but Union already, uh, like the heat lance are already devastating, so doesn't matter. But yeah, this would be a huge uh, firepower at point blank. There is also the constellation again with some heavy gun battery, uh, probably my pick for the Union. Uh, like you stay at closing, you count as long, and you will have uh, devastating with give them help. Good combo. Uh, the Republic, <laughs> let's look at it again, but for, for me it is Gatling guns, Let, let's think, like, mm, I'm pretty sure it is. So yeah, the Republic is the version that uh, is going to have the Gatlings. Uh, all those ships have very much changed from the orbit. A couple of the Union already were in the um, aerial section, but let's not compare to what they have now because they have really been changed. For example, the Ticonderoga. Uh, was the one that was actually a helicarrier and it could make pacifier assault so right now so if it keeps doing that it would be great but i don't see any landing pad for the pacifier assault uh, what i do see is a lot of either uh, aerial torpedoes or heavy rocket batteries if it is heavy rocket batteries uh, could be really cool especially if you could get, give them uh, extreme range uh, thanks to uh, for example a little uh, um, not a bogota but uh, uh, an akron observer which is what you can do uh, currently. An Akron Observer with this, uh, giving it uh, extreme range, would be like a very, very powerful unit to have two or three of those in the back of your field, because with extreme range, since they are aerial, they will see almost all of the map, and uh, yeah, it can be very, very efficient. And then we have the Ranger, which is kinda like the um, what the Ticonderoga was before. So they have this thing. I suppose it will uh, send SRS token from what it looks like. It could also be sending these pacifier assault we've been talking about before. Or if we're lucky, it does both of those. <laughs> so yeah, lots of options now. Really looking forward to seeing their new and updated profiles. Uh, we can see that those two guys have the same uh, head here. And the more combat oriented version, I don't know, they, yeah. I guess you will choose whatever you want because I don't think there is any option of, yeah, I think it's just like if you want some variety, you have some options for the command center, which is always good. Then, um, you're gonna think I'm joking, but probably my favorite unit is this Bogota Carriol. Just love it. It's basically an Akron, but a little bit thicker and carrying, I don't know, troops or ground tokens, maybe ground tokens actually and uh, it just looks uh, great it really reminds me of the dragon airship in um, avatar actually and it just looks perfect to me and i love it and i want as many of those as possible then we go to the crimson league and uh, as you can see they start very strong uh, with this lycaeum class aerial dreadnought and it looks amazing there is a named variant which is the barul badur i think uh, which is the flagship of the princess Sherazad. and yeah it looks so good i think it looks so good that it can make some people start playing sultanate uh, it reminds me a little bit of the romulans in uh, star trek a little bit if you see uh, what i mean and the crazy thing is they have a chronolith which is red Right here in the center, uh, which is uh, something you usually find on the Covenant and uh, more on the large uh, surface ships like the Archimedes class. And here, no, no, they're just gonna uh, put it in the center and make it fly around. It means it's going to be a very good linchpin for your fleet because it's gonna be tough. If you take the name variant, I think it has an internal shield generator, which is great. And uh, plus, if you take the name variant, you upgrade all these little rocket batteries, and you know I'm not a huge fan of those, uh, into um, particle beamers, or more like the um, sorry, the lower version, the uh, Aetheric Lances, and then it's a really, really good ship with everything. So, uh, like, amazing ship, plus if you take it in the right uh, version, um, either the name variant, or you put it in uh, Crimson League Fleet, you gain also um, 
Luminate Rose Defenses, which is always great. And uh, yeah, the design is amazing, and I will probably put it out on the field every single time I make a Sultanate list. It looks too good. Or even a non-Sultanate fleet, so because uh, like, for example, what if you play uh, uh, those as mercenaries, for sure. Then you have some mass 2 ships, and I will not go too much in details about the statistics uh, because the characteristics have changed and uh, some names have changed. I'm not sure what is going to stay the same or not. Uh, but yeah, the weapons have changed, uh, everything. Let's, so let's skip. The Nasser is uh, the one, the most default one, I would say, with one heavy weapon in the front and two small uh, rocket uh, batteries. Uh, I would say it looks fine, especially if you can make it an expensive ship with a particle beamer to the front and two small etheric lances. Might be expensive if you can do that, but then it's going to pack way above its, uh, its weight class. Uh, however, uh, it is relatively fragile. The um, uh, aerials of the Sultanate are quite fragile, and uh, for example the mass 1s are armor 4, which is the lowest value of the entire game. Uh, the mass 2s can get uh, luminiferous defenses if you put them as crimson links, but still it's not going to save them from any dedicated firepower, so you need to th consider those more as glass cannons. Uh, and this guy will want to be at closing range with these default uh, weapons, so yeah, it will count as long, so fine, but uh, still be careful with those. They are more like uh, cuttle or knives, let's say, uh, than a hammer. We will have also the House Biri, which is the one with all the rocket batteries, which is, as you can uh, guess, I don't like this at all. But it does have torpedoes as well, so maybe it has a role as a ship that will stay at extreme range. Since it is aerial, it will see most of the map, and then you can just rain torpedoes from afar, and if enemies get close, you can start to shoot uh, rockets at them, or gun batteries. If you can upgrade, upgrade those rockets as gun batteries, it's going to be much better, because then for sure you can throw um, torpedoes, and if the enemy gets close, uh, you can threaten them as a counter punch, getting closer and shooting all your gun batteries. Yes, you're gonna get closer, but it's a real counter punch, while, I don't know, three rocket batteries do uh, usually uh, nothing, especially in Sultanate, which don't have any ways uh, that I know to boost them. Finally, the Muharib, which is the, I don't know what is this, this little thing in the front, it does not have uh, torpedoes, I see, only two rocket batteries, so either it is a cheaper version, uh, either it is fast, because it's called a Skyrunner, and if this, for example, houses an internal portal generator and it has Vanguard, uh, then for sure it's going to be a very interesting ship. Again, we'll need to see the profile. Uh, if it is just a cheap version with, for example, logistical support, also absolutely has its place in a list. Uh, it looks good, so I hope the profile is good. Uh, is good. It's probably my favorite version, uh, appearance-wise, so I do hope it is playable. Then you have some mass ones, uh, they are quite uh, cheap, all of them, you don't have to choose, uh, which is a good thing. Uh, you have three Hirkas, which are the sky cutters. Uh, I'm hoping this is going to be in the end a hit lancet, uh, which would fit the name sky cutter. Uh, if it is, uh, then it's going to be a very offensive oriented ship, kind of like a siren for the alliance. Uh, though it means it combos not so good with the rocket, which is something you usually have when you want to stay far away. If you can upgrade this into a good battery, then great. We'll have to see the profile. I quite like this appearance is very fish-like, almost reminds me of uh, a little airship in uh, Super Mario if you see the, the style, but I do quite like it. You will also have three al -Sakr. I hope I pronounced it right, I have no idea. Uh, I really like the appearance, this is the one in the current orbit that can be attached. I hope it keeps this capacity of being attached, it looks very very fast. I like the asymmetrical design with the wing on the side and the reactor on the other side. Uh, probably it's not going to do a lot of damage. If it can uh, throw some torpedoes or can leak with its parent unit, it's always going to be good. Uh, if it stays cheap and remains an attached unit, you can expect to see it quite a few. I hope it also has acceptable attrition so you don't feel too bad. Then you get some... Uh, civilian ships. Uh, they do look tough. I suppose they're gonna be mass 3 looking at the size, uh, mass 2 at the minimum, but I think mass 3, with a shield generator. It's going to be tough-ish, and a gun battery, so they're not defenseless. You have the Titanic, uh, sorry, the Titan, uh, which is the default surface variant, and the Olympia, uh, which is the aerial version. I like that they kept the name Titanic and Olympic that were planned in their early 20th century, and uh, I really love the Olympia from the appearance point of view. Plus, it's supposed to be tougher, since it 
is uh, aerial, it doesn't care about torpedoes and it can stay uh, further away from the enemy. Uh, I suppose it's going to be more expensive if it is something you pay with points. If it is for an objective, yeah, I think I'm going to put an Olympia every time because it's just going to look better on the table. And note the little anchor here. I love the idea of an airship using anchors. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> But yeah, it's quite quite fun. I'm really looking forward to see the civilian ships uh, rules in the classic games, not only in uh, usual scenarios. And then we're going back here for a second uh, because I would like to uh, show you some other things that are not uh, put in detail. For example, we have some uh, resources there maybe it's gonna be fought over for the island we have some uh, civilian ships tokens I have no idea what it does but they're here really looking forward to seeing what they do and they do look fine we have some civilian ships there as well but larger one mass ones they do look to have cranes so I suppose they're going to have um, what is the name advanced repair facilities um, if it is it's going to be fun especially for objectives or if you can uh, repair yourself and then most interesting thing of all is those ground tokens because uh, it means that finally we're going to have rules for the ground token uh, invasion part of the game uh, if you see some uh, what to build videos we've made recently or even those that are going to be released later on that i've already registered you will hear me saying uh, yeah well we'll need to see, uh, wait uh, to uh, to see what ground tokens actually do before we say if this ship is good or not well good news uh, we're going to have ground token soon which means we should have ground token rules very very soon uh, end of October at the latest and uh, that is it for the civilian ships we do have a lot of uh, grubbins as well uh, we have uh, condition tokens of course two sets of cards very good uh, probably the latest cards here is I see it's written 1.00 but you should get at least 1.01 uh, lots of dice, always useful, and uh, single movement tools, which you can uh, share, like it's okay, you only need one at uh, any single time. The rules, hopefully the latest rule 3.04. We will see that during the unboxing and the fortune and glory campaign where will you will have some fluff some building instructions and of course uh, the scenarios to remake the campaign it's usually not crazy scenarios it's more like to learn learn how to play for newer players uh, it's not something you will play often with open campaign and uh, choose your own rules and etc no it's very uh, scripted let's say but it's a very good tool to start to learn the game uh, especially if you are newer players and after this, we go for another release, a very surprising one, which is going to be a pack of icebergs and glacier. And this, I'm not sure what to think about it. It really, really depends on the price. So those can be used for terrain. And uh, yeah, it really depends what the material is going to be made of. Uh, they don't specify here. They just say you have eight icebergs. Some of those uh, mass ones, you get some mass twos and a single one that is going to be mass three or mass four. And uh, you can play them on the table to really fill it up but if it's made of resin it's going to be <laughs> big blocks of resin and it's going to be very expensive for what it is uh, because as you've seen on the channel we have some uh, icebergs made of foam and they look good so those are of course a little bit more detailed but I'm really curious about what material they are made of if it's resin it's going to be overpriced and I would not recommend buying them if they're made I don't know of foam or some stuff like this uh, of, of plastic, I don't know. Uh, if it is cheap enough, uh, having one pack or even two packs of those is going to be really good to fill up your tables because uh, currently the terrain, like the little islands that are sold, are a little bit too small to really be able to play comfortably. Uh, so I'm really hoping the pricing is uh, coherent. So uh, people do want to buy those glaciers and fill up their table uh, nicely. Uh, we'll have to see the price and the material. Um, yeah. So that's, uh, I'm really curious to see. They, they look quite detailed when you look at this. I don't know, uh, if you think you can know what the material is, uh, do let us know in the comment. Uh, I don't believe this is going to be resin. I'm really curious in what it's going to be. Uh, I hope it's cheapish, like around, I don't know, thir between 30 and 50 euros for the whole pack. Even 50 is going to start to be a lot. If it is around 30 uh, euros, I can see myself buying a couple packs of those just uh, to get them painted fast with a contrast or something and uh, fill up the table because this is really, really going to be needed. 
and then the last release is going to be the Scandinavian support squadron for the yeah the Scandinavians and the signs of Jutland uh, which had been released the last month and it makes me uh, realize that actually uh, we had three major mercenary releases uh, on the uh, over the span of two months uh, that is quite crazy and uh, yeah it's uh, it's good because like you always want some mercenaries you're like ah you know I could just buy the box and it gives me 500 points of mercenaries okay good and then you start to play them you like them and you're like okay well I do already have Scandinavians maybe I should uh, pl start to play Imperium and start collecting I don't know zeppelins or something so uh, yeah it's always a bit uh, tricky be careful not to start too many factions uh, all at once so you get two mass twos I will not go too much in details but uh, because there are so many variants uh, all of them are, are good and have something to say we will make a dedicated uh, what to build video about the signs of Jutland uh, you have four of these very cool uh, submarines mass ones that look like u boat really liking the design you get two of the Valkyries which are those uh, little guys here that look like the dropship from uh, Alien and uh, it's always good to have more Valkyries because you can attach them either to your named uh, Valhalla or to your Odin so really good to uh, be able to have two units of two to uh, attach and um, yeah it's uh, very nice and you get some uh, uh, Valley uh, Midjet Submarine uh, tokens uh, which are do we see them which are those things here uh, is good either if you play the non-named uh, version of the Valhalla or if you play the uh, Ang Angor Boda which is this um, mass 2 that is the submarine carrier all right that's uh, going to be it for the release oh no we have some Normandy farm uh, being released okay I don't uh, I've never even seen those in the real life uh, looks good if you play, for example, a uh, historical war game, or if you play the Conflict uh, 47, or these kind of like uh, alternate World War II uh, scenarios, uh, games I should say. And uh, yeah, looks pretty good. Like I cannot say anything because I've never seen them, but it does look like Normandy meal to me. Like, I mean, I've been a couple times to Normandy for vacation. And uh, yeah, it absolutely does look like this when you go to like kind of like old farms. I got a, a friend that has something that really looks like this with a little wall around. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> cannot speak about the quality of this, but I can say that it looks uh, very much uh, normal. Absolutely. Oh, and these trucks. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess the farm uh, tools uh, are the same in every country, so I, I will not try to say that it's very, very French uh, related. But uh, but yeah, yeah, it's exactly. This. Yeah, well done War Cradle uh, for this, but they, there is a lot of stuff, damn! Uh, they are all uh, sold uh, differently, but uh, yeah, I guess if you... Uh, I've heard that this is quite uh, cheap, this terrain, so if you want a whole uh, set to play like uh, Conflict 47, or um, there is another name, the game uh, finishing by 47, uh, all these uh, games, you can have this uh, cheap uh, terrain, and make the whole table. Like I've seen recently for Conflict 47, a whole Normandy landing uh, table with all the weird walkers and weird weapons and stuff. It was really looking really cool. And it would look even cooler if uh, they play in normal uh, city like this or uh, normal farms because it reinforces the weird aspect of all these uh, German walkers and, and etc. All right, that is going to be it for today. Just wanted to share my excitement about the newest releases. Uh, if you like this video, uh, please give us a thumbs up. It really helps. If you uh, see this video uh, today as it's being released, uh, you can give us a comment. It gives you a chance to uh, win an entire Russian battle fleet. Uh, we will make the um, random picking up uh, early October. So it's very soon. So leave us a comment and you will gain a chance. And uh, otherwise, until the next video, take care of yourself. If you want to buy those uh, pre-orders, remember to go through my UB place through the links in the description and you'll have minus 10%. Remember to choose us also in the, in the cart uh, as the channel you want to support. Take care of yourself and remember to keep spreading the love all around. Bye!